Well, good morning again. Welcome to part four of my DRO installation odyssey. So, after spending quite a bit of time rooting through a hundred drawers of fasteners, um, I was not able to come up with anything that uh, matches this. Um, the the major diameter in this is 0.114. I need to look at my chart and figure out if that's a indeed a, a number five, but uh, it measures. Uh, 2.9 millimeters, so I don't know that it's necessarily metric. I don't think it is. Um, so plan B was to go ahead and take uh, some of these nice lightweight aluminum screws, and I thought what I would do was uh, just turn these down and make a new screw. Fortunately, I don't have a 544. Is that what it was? 544. 544 National Fine die. I got a 540, I got, a, I got everything but. So, I don't really fancy driving to the home center on the small chance that they're going to have something that's the, that's the same size as this. I have a feeling that's going to be an exercise in futility. So, I think what I'm going to go ahead and do um, is, you know, these are just... Where's my calipers? I left them across the room. These screws are just barely long enough to come through this piece of... Uh, See that? This piece of plate I had, they're almost exactly the, the right thickness. So what I think maybe I'll do is I'm going to try to counterbore halfway through uh, this piece of brass. And we'll give that a shot. I don't know. I think I could probably do that. Again, I don't really... F I guess I should clean up the, the, uh, the table on the other milling machine so I can, I can use that. I could probably do it on the drill press too. Um, these guys are like bugle head screws, so I, I, I do need a flat bottom hole. Um, or ideally, I'd like to have a flat bottom hole, so I want to draw. I want to use an end mill for that. Uh, I don't know for something this small. I'm sure I can probably get away with putting an end mill uh, in the drill truck and the drill press. I'm not uh, hogging off a lot of material, and this is pretty soft. So I think before I go ahead and, and cut this to, to size and everything, I'm just going to go ahead and. and uh, drill a couple of holes in, or, or counterbore a couple of holes on one end rather and that way uh, you know if I'm if I fail I still have the rest of this piece to work with in fact I think I maybe I might maybe I'll get lucky I got a whole drawer full of counterbores uh, maybe I have an actual counterbore that's the right size I don't be dinking around with an end mill so I'm gonna go look for uh, some tooling and then we'll set up on the drill press and, and give this a shot all right let's see how it goes Okay, so the head of the screw, uh, <clears throat> it's about, uh, oh, it's about 21 thou, so, so I found a counterboard that's about two, 22, 23, so I think that'll be perfect, and then the, uh, the pilot on that is 140. We're going to drill a bit. That's just about 140, so that should be good. Hopefully, it'll drill a tiny bit oversized. So, the next thing to do is to find the location of these screws. Unfortunately, I don't have, uh, naturally, don't have any 544 uh, transfer punches or, or uh, transfer screws. I got a couple other sizes. So, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, sort of do this by eyeball. I got my magnifiers on. And if I come in here, and, you know, again, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to just assume this is probably metric, again, because it came from the, the PRC, and I don't think they fancy doing inches there so much. And, boy, wait, that looks... I'm going to go ahead and set my caliper exactly at 20 millimeters, because that looks pretty close. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, that's close enough, 20.02. And then if I just come in here and, and eyeball that real close, and that looks like it's pretty much right on center. So I think 20 mil is, is probably what it's, you know, what, it, what it's at least supposed to be. I'd say within Chinese tolerances, that's pretty good. So <clears throat> I put a little bit of bluing on my, uh, on my piece of stock here. I just went ahead and laid it out so it's pretty much even with the back of the back edge of the reader here. And then I'm in line. This, you know, this big fat line is more or less in line with that. Again, this doesn't have to be, you know, exactly crystal. So 
I got my caliper set for 20. I don't usually like to do a lot of scrapping with my, my, my Mini Toyos, um, but uh, it's just brass, so I'm not going to be too worried about it. So what I'll do is I'm just going to score, just gently score a couple of lines. They don't have to be perfect. I want to get them pretty close. And then I'll grab a uh, grab my spring-loaded center punch. Whoop! Sorry for jostling the camera like that. And we'll punch those lines. Go over to the drill press. We'll uh, drill through, and we'll try to counter bore. What is this guy going to be? To this piece of brass is you know, probably 325. Nominally 325, I guess. It's not perfectly flat, so I'm going to try to counter bore. I guess halfway through that. I don't know. It's going to be dicey, but we'll see. I think as long as and I don't need, you know, I don't need a ton of thread engagement on these. I just need enough to hold this piece on, so I, I think it'll be fine. So let me grab a punch, go to the drill press, we'll drill, try to counterboard these out just a bit, and we'll see how we make out. All right, so I punched my hole locations here. I'm going to start off with a center drill. I got a pretty small center drill here. Try to get those guys uh, opened up a little bit. Um, got work clamped in the vise. I'm not, I don't have the vise clamped to the table. I'm just going to let it free float. You know, brass can be a little grabby, but I'm working with small, uh, small drills and everything. I don't think I have any problem holding on to this. So here we go. <laughs> One center drilled. Put the other one lined up here. That looks pretty good. You know, the nice thing about a center drill, it's it's relatively typically rigid for its size. Um, if you got a good center punch mark on there, it has a pretty good tendency to find its uh, find its way to the center of the hole. I don't know if you can see, um, but when I first hit that, I was off by just a few thou. And when I when I brought the tip of the drill into the center punch hole, the, the work actually moved just a couple thou. Um, so now it should be in pretty good alignment. I guess I should check that, but maybe it's too late anyway. You know, I got plenty of stock to work with, and I think I have a few more pieces of brass that are like this. So, if I make a mess of this one, I'll just go ahead and get some more stock and try again. Put that bad part of my arm, put that bad boy away. I'll switch to our pilot drill. Hopefully, this truck is going to hold that guy. Yep. I have a smaller chuck that I chuck in this chuck if I need to work on really small work. Um, these Delta drill presses have an oddball taper on the chuck, if I recall correctly, and changing them out is not great. So, all right, well, I'm going to drill through holes for the counter bore. A little juice on there. There's one. There's the second one. Now let's see if my uh, if my pilot hole is big enough for this counter bore. If I got to go a little bigger. Oh, look at that! It's a perfect fit. Just right. Okay. Again, on my arm. Now let's see if I got enough clearance there. Yeah, it looks good. Now the tricky part. You know, I don't know that the, that the depth stopped on this is really accurate enough. Well, I guess it could, I guess I guess I'll maybe I'll do one and I'll set the stop. Um, I'm not going to try to like measure the the distance for the stop, and then you know. Uh, drill that, that, that depth. I'm just going to do this by eye. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and grab one of the screws so I can see where I'm at. And like I said, you know, this doesn't have to be ultra precise. I just need enough thread coming through the bottom. Oh, man, these stops are a pain in the butt. One of these days I'm going to make one of those little uh, quick adjust clamp-on stops. But I don't use the drill press for stuff like this all that often. You know, if I need to drill to a precision depth, uh, that's why I have, you know, three milling machines. Right, so. All right, well, let's see what of course, I've already gone too far, right? Really. So. Right. I'm grab the screw, use that as a gauge. Climb up a bunch of stuff here. Okay, well, here's the moment of truth, so. Come on, baby. This is completely in the way. Probably, probably completely in the way. I'm just going just a hair at a time, sort of spotting by eye, by depth. And that looks pretty promising right there. Now, can I get this screw in without dropping it into the big pile of chips on the floor and or moving the work? I guess I really need to worry about moving the work. It's going to kind of will self-center itself again. So if I drop that guy in there, so that the top is pretty flush with the top, and uh, if I get some light in here, that looks, that looks really good, actually. I think that's going to be just, just fine. Better than fine. It's going to be downright perfect. Uh, I think there's more than enough thread engaged to be able to hold this thing fast. I'm going to go ahead and take my screw and screw it back into my gauge plate here just so I don't lose it. I spend probably as much time looking for parts uh, that I drop or misplace or set aside as I do actually machining on a lot of days. Someday my shop's going to be organized. Yeah, sure it is. All right, well, there's one. Actually, since that came out so so nice, let's go ahead and there. Okay, there we go. Now I'll set my stop. And we'll do the second one. I'm gonna have to do that off camera. All right, so there's my holes. I'm looking at the viewfinder backwards here, so <laughs> if I appear to be a little bit dyslexic on this, I uh, apologize. So I think they're pretty good. They're Boy, they're way off center on this piece, but that's fine. Uh, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy with the way they came out. I'll deburr those a little bit and uh, <clears throat> cut off this brass. I don't know. Do I want to bother squaring it up? Probably not. This is under the knee. Nobody, nobody but me is ever going to see it again. And, I really want to get moving on in this part. So I'm going to go, just go ahead and measure it, cut it to length of the bandsaw, uh, give it a quick deeper, and uh, start working on the other piece of the mounting block that screws onto the knee. So success. That was actually pretty good, uh, pretty easy. That took me less time than I spent uh, hunting for the right screws, so I should have probably just done that from the start. But anyways, off we go. Okay, so we're getting ready for final fitment. I wasn't able to find a, a counter bore with the right uh, pilot for for counter boring this aluminum block here, so I just went ahead and used a drill. Uh, so the hole is not perfectly flat on the bottom. You know, it's going to be fine. Um, <clears throat> drilled and tapped for the mounting bracket here. So I just went ahead and found a, a you know a decent location for this. I, I put the cross light on to make sure there wasn't going to be inter any interference with anything. Um, you know, that looks like it's going to be fine. I just took a couple of grease pencil marks to get myself visually where I'm at. Very gently scribed the line so I didn't miss the paint up any more than it is. And now I'll go ahead and take the bracket off and um, transfer punch that. Drill and tap. Screw it on. And that should be all, it, all she wrote for the Z-axis. And I'll, of course, plug in the, uh, the little reader and test it and run the knee up and down. But I think I'm, uh, I'm getting pretty close. So third of the way done? Well, not really. I had to build the electronics and everything. So fifth of the way done? 
this is going to be a this is going to be a whole bunch of videos. I'm I'm up to four already. I have a feeling there's going to be probably four or five more when all said and done. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Um, hope you're maybe uh, learning from my mistakes. I haven't made too many yet, but I got plenty more time. I'm sure I'll uh, I'll bollock something up pretty good eventually. So let me go ahead and take the bracket off and get my find us the right transfer punch. Uh, figure out how to locate that block. Maybe I'll just go ahead and try to clamp it on if I can, just so it doesn't move on me. All right. So if you're like me, right about now you're asking, what you doing back at the shaper already? So when I went and fit this piece up and put the bracket on and attached it to the reed head, um, it's just a little bit proud. So the the piece of brass that you know is here is uh, is, is twisting a little bit this way. It needs to be just a little bit lower, and that was causing it to interfere with the, not interfere, but it was causing like to put a little twist on the, on the scale, so it's probably fine, but I figured I would go ahead and whack a couple of, uh, a couple of thou off of this bad boy, and, and that's going to be that, so I think I'm touched off here, let me just come over a little bit. me. Take up the backlash. And my feet in the right direction? No, of course not. I do quite enjoy running this shaper. It's, uh, one of the first sort of you know stationary power tools I ever bought was a power hacksaw. I kind of bought it on a lark at an auction and was found myself fairly fascinated by it, just watching it go back and forth. It's another tool like this where you know theoretically you set it and forget it and walk away and do something useful in the meantime. But uh, it's a pleasure to watch it do its job. So. Anyway, here we go. Let me just actually come over to the other side. I'll show you a little bit about how the shaper actually operates. So when the motor turns, it operates this little eccentric in here. And that eccentric is attached to the gearbox here, this little rocker gearbox. In the center, there's a ratchet mechanism in there. And then it ratchets, and there's a gear on the lead screw that advances the table. And every time the... Uh, it goes to the rear of the stroke, and advances the table. I'm feeding about, I don't know, about eight thousandths right now, and uh, it's giving me a pretty good finish on there. So, the way you adjust it is, you can move the eccentric further away from the center, and that actually swings this guy on a wider arc, which engages more of the teeth on the ratchet, and that'll, and that'll uh, feed more. Five thousandths is about the minimum feed, um, I think it'll go as much as probably 30 thou. Uh, I can't imagine wanting to go any more than that on this little machine. So. so that's the shaper. Just give you a little shot up here, the ram. Like I said, one of my favorite tools in the shop. Just a pleasure to use. All right, so we'll let this go. I'll probably take one more pass just for good measure, and then we'll bolt her up and uh, give her a test. All right, so there's the finished part. Nice little pile of chips there. Just smooth as a mirror. Fabulous. All right, good. Back to the uh, back to the closing. Mount her up. Give it a test. I guess I'm going to hit the knock the burrs off the edge of this, and uh, we'll start the first DRO testing. All right, is that really blown out and bright? Probably. Um, so let me just move down a little bit here. So that's the uh, the scale and the bracket. With its final fitting, everything lined up pretty good. Um, I think this plate wasn't completely straight. It might have had a slight bend in it, so I just put a washer um, behind these screws here, and everything seems to be lining up pretty good. And uh, let me pan up a little bit. I might just move in closer. Let's see.
Oops. Can you guys read that? It's either too light or too dark. Let me turn off my bright light and try again. And now we come to the moment of truth. Have I wasted 150 bucks and uh, a couple days of my time in the shop here? Or do I have a working serviceable DRO? Uh, this will be the acid test, I guess. So I have my DRO set here. I'm zeroed. I have my Minitoyo uh, set here on, a, uh, on my Noga on the column. I've got this guy, well, I've got this guy sitting as straight as I can get it, I think. Because obviously that's going to throw the readings off a little bit. Let me zero out again. Take my hand off the table. All right, zero is zero. Let's come up 25 thou. Okay, so there's 25 exactly in the mid of Toyo. Oop, I got 23 on this guy. Let's see how sensitive she is. No, all right, let's go to back to zero. Is my head right in the way? Maybe. Okay, there's zero. Still at zero. Twenty-five in the Metatoya and twenty-two on the DRO. Not great. Let's come up to a hundred. Hundred and a half. A hundred. Ninety-eight. Well, I mean, it's not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible. <clears throat> you know, I'm, the, a lot of the stuff I do, I'm not. Uh, I'm not looking for a half thousand worth of uh, accuracy. You know, I'm building little steam engine, making parts for my machines as much as anything. So, I don't know. This may be, I may be able to live with that. I'm going to come up to one inch. Well, I have an inch of travel here. I don't have an inch of travel here. Let's go up to half an inch. I think I got... Seven, eight, nine, half an inch, four, nine, seven, three thou. There's five oh one and four ninety nine. <clears throat> it's it's not it's not awful. It's not perfect, but it's not terrible. Um, one thing I, you know, I'm not planning on using uh, these readouts, you know, permanently. I've just got these probably temporarily set up. So when it, with the, on the DRO software, um, when you calibrate it, you calibrate it with the number of ticks um, that, that the scale counts off. And then you program that into the DRO software. So it's possible that um, I'll be able to compensate a little bit based on that as well. You know, I think that the issue may be that... I assume that there's some kind of engraving on the back of this that there's a, that there's probably a magnum in the back of here that picks it up and counts that, um, and you know may not be engraved all that accurately, so it's hard to know where the inaccuracy comes from, but uh, I don't know. I would say for general purpose use, this is going to be probably fairly serviceable. I mean, certainly it beats counting revolutions on the dial. Let's come down 100. Okay, let's come down 250. Nine. So there's 250 indicated on the uh, on the DRO. I'm on 249 and a half. So, I mean, obviously it's you know it's a little bit variable, but it's uh, I think it's in the ballpark. I'm I'm reasonably satisfied for the amount of money I'm going to have invested in this thing. I think it's going to probably be pretty good. And, you know, typically what I do, or I will be doing, I imagine, is, you know, I'm going to use the DRO to get myself quote, close, and then I'll be taking measurements on the part anyway. So, you know, all in all, I think this is going to be a worthwhile project to continue. I'm going to go ahead and uh, break this down. I'll take a break for five minutes. What time is it? It's not quite time for a beer yet, but uh, and then I'm going to get set up and start working on y-axis all right stick with me i'll probably cut this video off i probably have enough long enough i've been yammering on long enough for one day so i'll probably cut this off 
and uh, pick it up on the next installment. Thanks for watching.